Good morning. I hope you all are well today. I wanted to take a moment to recognize our confirmands that helped um, in the service today. So I want to recognize Ava, who was the usher, as she came in and handed you your bulletins. And I want to recognize Haley for reading the scripture today. Thank you. They both are being um, confirmed next Sunday. So. Today we are continuing our sermon series, um, What Would Wesley Say? And, um, you know, we're, we're taking a look at uh, John Wesley's biblical teachings on important concepts that, that help to inform us on our faith. And so um, it's helpful for us as it's helpful for us as United Methodists, um, you know, to know these these important concepts. Um, if you're not familiar, John Wesley is the founder of Methodism, and um, so we've covered um, over the last four weeks. We've talked about grace. What would Wesley say about grace? What would Wesley say about salvation? What would Wesley's uh, mother say about parenting? And today we will talk about what would Wesley say about discipleship? Please pray with me. Dear gracious God, I thank you. I'm always thanking you for who you are and what you've done and what you're going to do because I'm just so thankful. Lord, I, I ask that um, today that they see and hear you through me. And uh, may the words that I speak and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right. So I'd like to go back to our text um, that Haley read, Matthew 28, 18 through 20, which is in your bulletin. And we see um, in today's selection, so Jesus uh, was resurrected and he appears and he speaks to the disciples. And he tells them that he has all authority in heaven and on earth. And then he, he it instructs them to go and to make disciples of all nations. I want to emphasize all, all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then he tells, tells them to teach them, teach them and, to, and to, to help them obey everything that he is commanded. And then he reassures them that he is with them always. Always. So Jesus sends the disciples out on their, out to proclaim and to live um, the life that Jesus lived in their presence. He sends them off to be disciples and to make disciples. And then tells them, I'm, I'm with you. Always. And that's a message for us as well. But I wanted to point out that the word disciple, it's a root word. And you can find that word in discipline, in the word discipline. Because to be a disciple requires discipline. It requires us to be intentional in our actions to be disciples. And um, also, I just, I, I just found that, that piece really important, that it takes intentional discipline to be who God has called us all to be and to do what he has called us to do. And so what would John Wesley say about discipleship? 
He says, effective discipleship is helping to lead others to Christ, not only by words, but by your actions that should reflect Christ. And creating true relationship and community along the way. And then Wesley says, the church changes the world, not by making converts, but by making disciples. And that we have one business on earth, and that's to save souls. So we're gonna talk through, what does it mean to be a disciple? What's required of us? How can we be a better disciple? So the first thing that I wanted to make you aware of, if you don't already know. There's the Book of Discipline. This is a book um, which is considered the laws, um, theological beliefs, the laws, and the way that we are to live as United Methodists. And um, I had a lot more tags in here because I used this book when I was <laughs> when I was having my oral exam, preparing for my oral examinations. Um, but this book has the general rules in here, the rules for us, how we are to live as United Methodists. And um, so I just wanted to mention those because it ties into discipleship. One is to do no harm, avoid evil of every kind, even indirectly. Always doing good, always doing good. And then attending upon all of the ordinances of God. Worship, prayer, reading scripture. So we'll talk more about those, how those tie into being a disciple. So the general rule of discipleship is to witness to Jesus Christ in the world and to follow his teachings through acts of compassion and justice and worship and devotion under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. That's important, the Holy Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit that's with us always, that's guiding us and helping us on our Christian journey, which we all know is not an easy one, right? We all have flaws. Sometimes we put other things above God. Sometimes we take a different path than what God has called us to, but you know, he lovingly brings us right back to where we were supposed to be. But it's through the Holy Spirit and God's grace and his love that's with us always. So when we think about discipleship and what it means to be a disciple, it begins by acknowledging that as a disciple, we are to, we are to witness to Jesus Christ. And we are to tell others about Jesus Christ and what he's doing in the world. And then secondly, we are supposed to um, live and witness in the world, right? So we are to be the church outside of the church. Telling your stories what God has done for you, sharing your testimonies. I know um, I've shared my testimony before, but I didn't always share my testimony. I didn't share my testimony because I'm personal, you know. Um, I didn't want people to judge me. Um, I felt some shame behind it. 
but I knew that I had to share my story because others would be able to relate. And in that you find true blessing. You can bless someone with your story of what God has done in and through your lives. That's a big piece of being a disciple. It's a big piece about being in relationship with one another as well, right? Because how can you disciple someone if you're not in relationship with them? Also, um, walking and serving with Christ, who is at work in the world. So, you know, seeking out the poor, seeking out outcasts, seeking out sinners. Isn't that what Jesus did? His entire ministry. That's his ministry. Ministering to those who needed him. So it requires of us to kind of step out of our comfort zones and to minister to people who are different from us, who have different needs, who may think differently, who may look different. All right. If you see someone in the church and maybe um, you haven't seen them before, maybe they look a certain way, instead of walking by them saying hello, making them feel welcome, because that's what we're supposed to do. We're the church, and people are looking at us. People are looking at our walk and how we're behaving and how we're acting. That's what being a Christian is all about, is loving one another despite, despite it all. And that can be hard. That's what a Christian is. That's what a disciple is. And then again, making sure that your walk is imitating Jesus. Not just on Sunday when you come to church, but all the other six days of the week. How do we behave? How do we act? What is our walk telling other people? And then, as a disciple, and as we're discipling, right, as we're making disciples, we're growing in in God's love through his grace, through his mercy. We're maturing. We're growing. And um, that's what Jesus is commanding us to do. I know it's, it's easy for me to, to get up here and, and tell you, you know, what we're supposed to do, right? It's easy to, to say that. Um, but I'm going to tell you that John Wesley uh, formed uh, small groups. They were called holiness groups. And um, it was small groups of believers who got together, a group of seven to ten people, And they held each other accountable in love, encouragement, um, you know, making sure that you did what you said you were going to do. You know, are you praying? You know, are are you seeking out the poor? Are you attending to all things of God? And so they would come together and they would hold each other accountable. They would love on each other because, you know, we're going to fall short. But then we have this group who encourages us and helping us in our our Christian walk. Um, I know a a series or two uh, prior, we were asking folks to form small groups, you know, accountability groups. I don't know if some of you have done that, but you still have the opportunity to do that. You can form a small group. You can form a smaller group than that. Maybe it might be just a group of four. Maybe it might just be a group of two where you get together with someone and you pray together. Maybe it's every morning. Maybe, you know, it's, it's once a week. But you have someone who um, is holding you accountable, 
who, um, who you can talk to about what you're going through, what some of your challenges are in this Christian walk. When you have someone else walking with you, the journey becomes easier. So I encourage you to either form a small group um, or just, you know, even if it's just one person, having an accountability partner that you can team up with to help you be a better disciple. So when we think about um, discipleship and how we can be a better disciple, one is really to be rooted in scripture. That means you gotta read the Bible. You gotta read the word. How can you know God if you don't read the word? How can you be in relationship with God if you are not reading the word? You have to read the word for yourself and you cannot rely on the pastors or the leaders, right? To interpret or to tell you what that word is. I mean, we can do that, but is that helping you in your relationship with God? So you have to read the word for yourself. You have to dig deeper into the word to know who God is, to know what God has for you, and to form a more intimate and personal relationship with him, to fully understand. Two, prayer. We should be communicating with God through prayer and listening for what God has for us, listening for that help listening for that guidance, listening for that wisdom. And then fasting. Fasting is powerful. When you um, put together fasting and prayer, oh my, it is powerful. Fasting from, um, it could be food, it could be your cell phone, it could be technology, something that is a sacrifice for you not to do. That's fasting. And then again, accountability. Being accountable to living a Christ life. Being an example to, uh, to those who you are trying to disciple. As I said, an accountability partner is helpful. It's helpful. Being in relationship is key. Striving to make and build relationships with other people. Because again, how can you disciple someone if you're not in relationship with them? Taking the time to say more than just hello. Being in conversation. I know life is busy. We all have a lot going on but taking the time to be in relationship with someone else beyond your family and your friends. I'm gonna challenge you to um, start to make or build a relationship with someone who's different from you. They could have different perspectives or maybe they look different than you. I challenge you to, to do that building relationships. Because again, that was Jesus' ministry. He wasn't around just everyone that looked like him or thought like him, right? He dined with sinners and outcasts. Um, we see, there's an example um, in Mark, I think it's chapter two. Um, uh, Jesus was breaking bread with Levi, the tax collector. Um, and remember that Levi was a Jew, but he was a tax collector and he was working for the Romans, so the Jews despised him, did not like him at all, right? But Jesus saw a potential disciple and sought after him and ate with him. That's what we're supposed to be doing. That's what the church is. That's the mission of the church. 
really what it all boils down to is love. We are supposed to be, okay, the commandments, love God and love your neighbor like yourself. Love your neighbor like yourself. It all boils down to loving others, that unconditional love. That's what we're required to do. So <clears throat> in the holiness groups, Wesley, in your bulletins, you were given John Wesley's 22 questions, right? These are questions that the group contemplated and reflected on. Am I consciously or unconsciously creating the impression that I am better than I really am? In other words, am I a hypocrite? Am I honest in all my acts and words, or do I exaggerate? Do I confidently pass on to another what was told to me in confidence? Can I be trusted? Am I a slave to dress? Am I a slave to my friends? Am I a slave to my work? Am I a slave to my habits? Am I self-conscious? Am I self-pitying or self-justifying? Did the Bible live in me today? Do I give it time to speak to me every day? Am I enjoying prayer? When did I last speak to someone else about my faith? Do I pray about the money I spend? <laughs> Do I get to bed on time and up on time? Mm. I'm preaching to myself, yeah, not, not just to you guys, but to myself too. Do I disobey God in anything? Do I insist upon doing something about which my conscience is uneasy? Am I defeated in any part of my life? Am I jealous? Am I impure? Am I critical, irritable, touchy, distrustful? How do I spend my spare time? Am I proud? Do I thank God that I am not as other people? especially as the Pharisees who despised the publican. Is there anyone whom I fear, anyone whom I dislike, anyone who I have disowned, anyone that I criticize, anyone that I hold a resentment toward or a disregard? If so, what am I doing about that? Do I grumble or complain constantly? And is Christ real to me? Mm. So you all have these questions. I want you to take some time over this week and to contemplate and to reflect on those. And if there is something that you need to change, how are you going to change that? What course of action are you going to do to change your behavior, your thoughts? Write it out, put a plan in place. Because we have to be intentional. It takes discipline to be a disciple. It takes discipline to set aside time to pray. It takes discipline to um, read scripture daily. It takes discipline to say, I'm going to have a conversation with my neighbor or I'm going to have a conversation with someone I don't know it takes intentional discipline. So I challenge you all
to be more disciplined and to be a better disciple and to be who God has called us all to be. I know the word love just sounds so simple, right? But it's not. It's hard. It's hard loving someone who you may not really like. Or maybe you really don't know them. Or maybe they've done something towards you that was negative. But we're called to still love regardless. We're called, we're called to have pure thoughts. I say all the time, I'm like, God, please cleanse my heart, purify my mind. Because I'm not gonna stand up here and tell you that I have good thoughts all the time. But when those thoughts come into my mind, I'm like, Lord, whew, I'm praying. And I'm praying hard. So be the people who God has called you to be. I know you can. Let's, let's work on being better disciples for God. Let's work on um, loving God with our whole hearts and loving our neighbors with our whole hearts. Will you pray with me? Dear God, we thank you that your grace, your grace helps to keep us on this Christian journey. It helps us to stay the course so that we can be the disciples that you have called us to be. And Lord, we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen.